We were just talking about that earlier, Lisa and I, because uh, she just had this amazing experience up in Cincinnati, and and um, then the spirit said, go into David's videos. And she went in, and on my YouTube page, there's, there's the video that comes up first, which plays automatically. Attack is impossible. And that was the experience that she had. It was like a confirmation of, that's just another way of talking about atonement, that attack is impossible. If you have an actual experience of the impossibility of attack, then your mind is freed up to to be the innocence that it is. But, but it's the illusion of attack that brings in the illusion of guilt, that brings in the illusion of fear. We're not just talking any attack, we're talking about absolutely any attack in all of time and space or history of seeing the impossibility, that all attack is a misperception. So that's kind of another angle at coming at it, at atonement, of, you might just say, seeing the absolute impossibility of attack. There's even a point in the Course, because the Course brings in the sickness theme. And a lot of people, that's a very important theme, is sickness and health. And Jesus gives like divine logic, one, two, three, like he's going to lay it out like, here you go. If you are interested in healing, uh, he says, try these three on. First one, um, I am not a body, and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick. He's saying, if you can totally just give yourself over to the first two, you will have a happy realization I cannot be sick, and that's divine metaphysics. So I am not a body, he's saying, why would you identify with this thing that the ego made up as a substitute home for heaven, and as a substitute reality, and even if you just see the body as a teaching learning device, why would you identify yourself with a teaching learning device? You're so much more. It would be like identifying with a, with a pencil. You know, like, uh, it's a writing device, I mean, it's, it's fine, it's a, it's a, or a pen, it's a, it's a good writing device, but, but why would you give your identity, your I am-ness, over to a pencil? And, and if the body is just a teaching learning device, why would you give your identity over to a teaching learning device? It's very temporary, as we know. It's here, it's gone. So why give your whole sense of identity to it? The second one is, and my mind cannot attack. Why does he say it that way, my mind cannot attack, is because all the seeming attacks in form, bodies attacking each other, countries attacking each other, uh, cancer cells attacking, all this huge much ado about nothing that Shakespeare talks about was made up. Why were all these attacks in the world made up except to cover over this belief that, oh, that I attacked God, that I pulled my mind away from God? That's why he's saying my mind cannot attack, because he's saying, no, you never really could pull that off. The fall from grace stuff that you've been reading about in all these different traditions. No, you weren't created to fall from grace. The attack that you think you did on God, like like a, talking about a Garden of Eden attack, or a, an attack where you could pull your mind away from your source, that one never happened. And you're still playing this game of mini-attack, and getting caught up in all these perceptions because you are afraid to look upon the belief that you attacked God, that you were separated from God. So I cannot be sick. If those conditions are true, that's a way to come to atonement, you know, is really just take the simple divine logic and just follow it in. And say to God, say to the Holy Spirit, show me. I really want to get this. I, I'm, I'm worthy to know myself as you created me. I'm worthy to see that there are no mistakes. I'm worthy to see that there, there are no problems. You know, um, even Peace Pilgrim, who walked, walked around for so many years, decades of just walking around and, and just trust, she, she would say things like, yeah, I'm going along in my, my day, and then sometimes um, I seem to get off track, and then a problem will come and knock me back on track. <laughs> that was, How's that for optimistic? A problem will come and knock me back on track. She even had a higher way of looking at it. 
It's knocked me back on track. And now we're coming into a state of mind, that's why we're here talking about it, of, of an experience of no problems. And that is the highest, that's even higher than a, getting knocked back on track by a problem. It's your perceptions getting turned right side up instead of upside down. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful to see the world that way. You can you go your way rejoicing. There's a line in the Course, you know, there's a whole place that has been nicknamed the Promise. But it, the way it goes is, once you have accepted His plan as the one function that you <coughs> will fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you without your effort. Without your effort. So that's what we're talking, no problems, you know. When you're into no problems, you don't even perceive the problems. We get to hear the parables. He will go before you, making straight your path and leading in your way. No stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away. Melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing except the only purpose that you would fulfill. When you're in the purpose, when you're in the joy, when you're in the love, when you're in the happiness, you don't even perceive the problems. And then the parables are cute parables. We get there, Peter, get up. We got Peter picked us up at the airport. In the joy. In the joy, right. There was the reflection, a joyful Peter. We didn't know. We got to hear the rest of the story, like Paul, like Paul Harvey, you know. But that's the fun part of it. And wouldn't you want to live a life where you don't have any problems, where the whole world just rolls up to you, greeting you with happiness? It's, it's not pie in the sky, it's not Pollyanna, it's, it's actually just the way that it, it is, the way the mind works, when it's, it's on purpose. And then, when it's not, then that's just opportunities we talked about. Oh, there's plenty of opportunities, <laughs> you know, if, to, to see the high, to see the true light. <laughs>